Hello, and welcome to another segment of the Turtis Bavloff Project. In this uh, segment, I'm going to talk about what I learned from Walter Trampler. Walter Trampler was the uh, primary uh, viola teacher at uh, Juilliard at the latter part of the 20th century. Uh, he was a very elegant musician, a very elegant uh, uh, person. Played a lot of chamber music. He was involved in founding the uh, uh, chamber music from Lincoln Center uh, series. <coughs> he uh, made a, a definitive recording of the Mozart viola quintets with a Budapest string quartet. It was a marvelous recording. Uh, but he also played uh, concertos with orchestras and solo recitals. Uh, in thinking back as to uh, what I learned from Walter Trampler, there are three things that come to mind. Uh, one involves the left hand, the other one involves the right hand, and then the third thing is that, uh, involves the issue of musicianship. Uh, regarding the left hand and fingering, uh, Trampler was not big on exercises. Uh, he was happy for me to uh, practice uh, subject and shraddock uh, exercises on the viola, but he didn't want to spend uh, less than time on that. There, there's one issue of technique, though, that he was uh, pretty uh, keen on, uh, and that is that uh, uh, he wanted to be sure that you're able to play uh, any note vir <laughs> on any position in the, on the viola. That he didn't want you locked into uh, <clears throat> a particular fingering in a uh, piece of music that you might uh, perform at a concert because things happen during live performances and uh, you might find yourself in a different part of the fingerboard and <clears throat> if you only learn to uh, uh, play a particular note uh, in a certain position, then if you happen to be in the wrong position uh, on during a performance, uh, it could really throw you off. So he was really keen on uh, making sure that you could play a given note from a variety of different positions. And just to show you what, uh, what that means, uh, I played here uh, the opening of uh, the uh, Allemand from the fourth of the uh, cello Suites by Johann Sebastian Bach. And uh, the opening can be played in a, uh, on a, in a variety of positions. So let me show you what it sounds like in the first position. So that's the first position. How about the second position? That's the second position. You can play it in the third position. Or you could play it in the fourth position. Or you could play it in the fifth position. Uh, so, uh, Trampler encouraged doing exercises that moved you around playing the same thing so that you'd be able to play the same notes in a variety of different positions. So that's the issue about the left hand. The right hand, is of course the bow hand, and uh, the bow hand is uh, essentially a movement created uh, by by the right hand. And the easiest movement for the right hand is swing back and forth. That's kind of what the hands do, or arms do, when you're walking. And uh, if you uh, create bowings that essentially swing the arm back and forth, those bowings are going to be easier to play when you're nervous during a performance or something like that. And you're going to get stronger sound out of them. Uh, this general principle is violated, particularly by orchestra conductors who create bowings that uh, often don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, for example, if you uh, take uh, successive notes with, the, uh, as, as with a downstroke, uh, and that's uh, creates a pretty harsh sound as opposed to so you only want to want to do that if you're really looking for that harsh sound well uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, alternate bowings for uh, this section of, of this uh, piece by Bach which has lots of uh, 16th notes and these 16th notes comes in, uh, come in uh, uh, groups of four so there's four to a beat and Bach didn't indicate bowings. He didn't uh, uh, presume to tell the performer how to uh, 
performed a piece. He didn't put in any Boeings. He didn't put in any dynamics. So you're at liberty, liberty to do it however you want. So I, if you purchase a copy of this, uh, it's liable to have been edited by somebody who put in these markings. Uh, this particular version was edited by Louis Schwetzensky, who I presume was a uh, maybe a Polish uh, viola player, I don't know. <clears throat> but there's a section here that has uh, one, two, three, four groups of 16th notes, and the way he's got it bowed, uh, you play the first one separately and then the three connected. Now, if you, and they're all 16th notes, so they should all get equal value. So if you play the first one separate and the three connected, you get something like this. <laughs> So, uh, in order to be able to play those three in a dance stroke, the next one is an upstroke. You have to give that one three times as uh, much bow motion as the connected notes, and that's what uh, it makes that that separated note really stick out. And if you think about it in terms of breathing, it's like da 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 da, -da which it doesn't feel very comfortable, does it? So I don't know how Walter Trampler would <laughs> bow this, but uh, if you wanted to bow it along the principle of not creating these <laughs> these <laughs> hiccup kind of notes, uh, what you'd want to do. You want to include that separate note in the previous uh, stroke. And that way it doesn't stick out as much and you, you've got a much more comfortable back and forth kind of uh, uh, bow on. So that's the issue with the right hand. Now the third thing I to told you I was going to tell you about has to do with musicianship. And in this uh, uh, thing that um, Trampler was really big on, uh, I, I think it's fairly common to a lot of musicians. And that is, uh, he, he, he really uh, uh, stressed that you should never relax the phrase. I mean, I mentioned that he played chamber music, and in chamber music, the viola part is often fairly boring. And even in a boring uh, series of eight notes like that, he, 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 do, he wouldn't play them. Those don't move anywhere. You want to kind of drive them forward uh, to, uh, to make the music more exciting and, and so the listener is, is uh, kept uh, uh, engaged instead of allowing the listener to relax. There is a section in here in particular uh, where that's fairly critical involving uh, a uh, four sixteenth and then two eighth notes and it's a repeated pattern. Uh, Shachemsky has it has it bowed that way, which is fine. And it's sort of da 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 bum ba da 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 bum and, it, and it played that way, of course it, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. And so I was trying to figure out how to make this kind of move forward. And I think the trick to making it move forward is uh, is not to emphasize the the uh, downbeats or the or the beats, but the uh, the upbeats to the next uh, next measure or the next phrase. So instead of playing, we should uh, we might uh, you can drive it forward by. So that uh, the second eighth note is really leads you towards the next sixteen, which makes the whole sequence a lot more exciting. So I hope that's true. So let me let me uh, uh, try to play this whole thing, this entire movement, without remarks, and uh, see if uh, you agree that the trampler approach uh, improves the performance. 